I'm Matt from Unlimited. Welcome to this Q&A. Well, it's Q&A time here at the Unlimited YouTube channel. Yay. Information on how to submit questions for future Q&A videos will be in the description box down below. Uh, this is the TNA themed Q&A here at the Unlimited YouTube channel. The reason why I did a TNA themed Q&A is because TNA has been such a hot topic lately, both from a positive standpoint and from a negative standpoint. TNA has had a lot going against them over the past couple of years. Um, some stuff going for them. And I figured, since it is a hot topic, since it is still active, and since I really don't do much in the way of TNA videos on this channel, might as well do a TNA Q&A. Why the hell not? Oh well. <laughs> I'm not really excited for it. Uh, but I said I was going to do a Q&A video, and here I am doing it. So, TNA. Yay. Let's get started. Stephen Barron. Oh, by the way, next week there will be another WrestleMania Q&A. Uh, this week there will also be a video game Q&A where Walter Main uh, is going to answer your questions. Um, for that, the theme for that Q&A is Pokemon. So ask your Pokemon-themed questions. You can put them in the comments section below. Um, I'm also doing a fantasy baseball Q&A. Since it is baseball, we're getting closer to baseball season, and as a result, it's getting closer to fantasy baseball season. And since I'm actively involved in that, might as well do a Q&A on fantasy baseball. Maybe I'll give uh, you guys some tips, pointers, if you guys want. Uh, whatever the case may be. Those are just some other things that are going on. Next week, I plan on doing another WrestleMania-themed Q&A. Uh, you'll know when I do that later on. But Stephen Barron kicks it off. Uh, what could have been done to better salvage the main event of Victory Road 2011? Very simple. Uh, not have it happen. Very simple. That's, that's pretty much it. The, you could have called an audible. You still had time on the pay-per-view. Instead, you gave us the crap that we got. There we go. Uh, does Baron have any other questions? Uh, who would win in a fight, Ric Flair's coat or Jay Lethal's? <laughs> oh my god, that segment. That segment where Jay Lethal <laughs> started impersonating Ric Flair and then her elbow dropping their coats. And and oh my god, it was... It was Absolutely incredible. Uh, why are they branded as total nonstop action when the action isn't on all week? Valid point. <laughs> uh, how did they squeeze the six ring posts into four? They just did. I don't know. <laughs> Stephen Barron, good questions. That is all. Uh, Matthew Mullins, what was your favorite AJ Styles match to watch in the early days of Impact Wrestling? Uh, one of my favorite AJ Styles matches. I liked his match with Bully Ray at Bound for Glory 2013, but since you said early days, to go back a little bit further... I'll go with the well, one of my favorites is the tag team Ultimate X match where it was uh Styles and Daniels versus LAX. Now, that was a damn good match. Um I started watching TNA in about uh, I think 2006. So I didn't I obviously did not watch before that. So I'm having a hard time thinking of some of the other matches. Uh, the Unbreakable 2005 match with him, Daniels, and Joe is definitely up there as well. 
can't really think of any other ones off the top of my head, but those are just a few. How good was Bully Ray in Impact Wrestling? You know, Bully, well, Bubba Ray, whatever you want to call him, uh, is very underrated as a heel, and especially very underrated as a talker. So from a talking, talking standpoint, excuse me, the Bully Ray character really worked as a heel. Now, pairing him with Aces and Eights and having him be the leader of that crappy faction, put that aside, and the Bully Ray character was actually not that bad. So, there you go. Uh, who is worse, Vince McMahon or Dixie Carter? Good question. Vince has done a lot of bad. But he never had, he was never forced to change networks because he lied to the paper, no, the, not the pay per view companies, excuse me, because they lied to their own television network. Yeah, Dixie Carter takes this one. Because even though Vince McMahon has done a lot of bad, he's also done a lot of good and has made millions and billions of dollars. Meanwhile, Dixie Carter and her own stupidity, because of her own stupidity, has lost millions of dollars. So, yeah. Dixie Carter takes the cake on this one. I don't even think it's close. Like I said, Vince McMahon sucks, especially now. But he's done a lot of good in the past. Dixie Carter, even the good that she has done, hasn't even been that good. Just saying. How could you describe, how would you describe Kurt Angle's run in Impact Wrestling? Pretty much as expected. Came in. Be instantly became one of the top guys stayed that way for a while had some decent matches had some decent feuds so yeah it pretty much went as planned and as expected uh why wasn't jay lethal a world champion in impact wrestling i don't think they ever viewed him as a world champion which is sad because jay lethal has a look he has a personality and he has wrestling ability so, you know, this will tie into a question later. Um, but, yeah, he was one of the many fails in TNA in terms of failing to create a big-time star. We'll get to that question in a few. Uh, Gary Wayne Kirk Jr., why hasn't Vince bought TNA yet? There's really no reason to. I really don't think he's dying to get his hands on the TNA video library. And what does buying TNA really do for the business? If anything, if I were Vince McMahon, I would be hoping and praying that TNA would somehow be in a better position. I would be, I would be hoping and praying that TNA would actually become viable, legitimate competition for the WWE. Would that make the product better? Absolutely. A big problem in today's wrestling is that the WWE does not have any good competition. Don't even throw ROH in there. Because they have their own issues too. And don't even throw New Japan in there. Because again, they got their problems too. It's not like in the 90s where you had WCW and ECW. And it wasn't back in the 80s when you had all of the territories. It's a completely different time. And uh, I really don't think buying it solves a lot for business. I really don't. Why is it that careers come to impact to die? Good question. <laughs> it's a death wish you sign with TNA and your career is over. All right, I, I shouldn't say that because 
while there have been many careers that have died in TNA, there have also been many careers that have started in TNA. See AJ Styles as one example. So, yeah, I see your point, but I would think about your point a little bit more because while there have been careers that have come and died in TNA, there have also been some stars that were made in TNA. And like I said, I mentioned AJ Styles, but guys like James Storm, guys like Bobby Roode, guys like Eric Young, Chris Harris, back in the older Impact days, you had guys like Petey Williams, you had a lot of guys that were made in TNA, even Abyss, you know, they've had their own fair share of star, star power, so I wouldn't say that everyone goes to TNA to die. Although I do see your point, and I agree with it somewhat, but not everyone. Let's see. Ismael Baez, what's TNA? Next question. Dylan Rumor, rate and describe Randy Savage's debut in TNA. It happened. <laughs> That was when I wasn't watching TNA, um, but it was really surreal seeing Randy Savage back in the wrestling scene in 2004. And looking at him, I didn't even recognize him. Obviously, I recognized the music, but he didn't look like the Randy Savage of old. And as a result, I'm like, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> and it took me... Uh, listening to the commentators to figure out who it was. And that's saying something. Um, but it was weird to see him return, especially in TNA. Um, but yeah. Other than that, I don't really have much thoughts. Uh, how great was the Aces and Eights storyline? <laughs> I hate you. Um... How great was it on a scale of 1 to 10? About a negative 73. That's, uh, that's a fair way of putting it. It's a fair number right there. I'll, I'll go with that. Negative 73. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> uh, Walter Main. Yes, Walter Main. Excuse me. Um... In their history, what do you think has been TNA's biggest strength and what do you think has been their biggest weakness? Their biggest strength is that for a while, they were different. They didn't match the fold of a professional wrestling company. They were different. They stood out on their own. They had stars that people have never heard of, such as the AJ Styles and the Christopher Daniels, and the Samoa Joes. I know Joe had his recognition in ROH, but he had a lot of success in TNA too. You got guys like, like I mentioned earlier, Eric Young, Bobby Roode, the same crop of guys. You had a focus on the X Division. And the X Division was a huge part of TNA's success, and it still is, and it still can be. Um, that's definitely That was definitely a strength. Um, like I said, they looked different. They were presented differently. It wasn't your typical wrestling show up until, of course, 2010 when you pretty much tried to make it WCW 2.0. But uh, yeah, for a while, TNA was different. For a while, TNA built up their own crop of stars. And for a while, the presentation of TNA was completely different than the WWE's. So it made for a good product to watch. It made for a good alternative to watch. And that's a big reason why I started to watch it in 2006. Because it's not that I was getting tired of the WWE. I was just kind of getting bored with it a little bit. And I needed another wrestling show to kind of make me a little bit happier, I guess. Um, but those are definitely some strengths. And mention some of the talents. Those are definitely strengths, too. The fact that you have 
these homegrown guys who, looking back, you're going to say they started in TNA. Where did you start off your career? I started it in Impact Wrestling. Started it in TNA, Nashville, Tennessee, or Orlando, Florida. That's where I started my career, and I'm proud of it. That's that's a good thing to have that homegrown talent. Weaknesses. I can write a book on their weaknesses, but if you want to tie all these weaknesses together into one gigantic, colossal weakness, it's Dixie Carter. And thank God Dixie Carter isn't in a big role anymore. But yeah, Dixie Carter. TNA's inability to promote, to advertise, to market their product, their matches, their pay per views, their shows. That's a big weakness. The fact that TNA could never establish a wider audience. Kind of the problem that ECW had back in the day. Um, that's definitely a big hindrance too. Definitely a big weakness. Um, the fact that Dixie Carter uh, booked the shows and the storylines like a fan and not like a businesswoman. Just because you can have all of these big names from the past. Like the Hogans and the Bischoffs and the Stings and the Angles. And everyone else, the Nashes, the Halls, just because you can have them doesn't mean it's automatically great for business. She has too much of an emphasis on the past. And as a result, the homegrown talent that I talked about earlier kind of got lost in the shuffle. And that was a big weakness in 2010 because there was a time in 2010 when a majority of the big-time WCW players were on TNA's roster as either competitors or general managers or authority figures or whatever, managers. That that was a big weakness. Even though the ECW pay-per-view in 2010 got TNA's, I believe they got the most buy rates of any TNA pay-per-view. That's a good thing. But it's also a terrible thing because we're promoting ECW and not TNA. If the WWE were to do that, it'd be fine because they own ECW. Might as well make money off of it. But in TNA, you're promoting this dead organization, which as a result buries your own organization. And again, that's a big weakness. Like I mentioned earlier. Their inability to promote, put up a billboard, an ad in a magazine, a newspaper, a commercial, an advertisement online. You don't know how many times there's been a TNA show in the New York, New Jersey, or even Philadelphia area, and I did not know about it. That's because TNA doesn't know how to promote. It's plain and simple. Um, what, what other ones? Um there's there's so many to name, but they all fall under Dixie Carter. She was TNA's biggest hindrance. Who's TNA's biggest weakness? Um, another big TNA weakness, uh, the fact that they left Spike, got pretty much kicked off of Spike because of their own stupidity. It's, that was definitely a big weakness too. Uh, the fact that they had a bunch of homegrown talent um, that they kind of dropped the ball with, and that'll get to another question. It's definitely a big weakness, too. Um, there's so many to name. There's so many to name. Taking a while to go on the road um, to a point where it was pretty much too late. I, I'm, I applauded them in 2013 for trying to get out of the impact zone and head, to the, head on the road, but... Um, it was too little too late. That, that's pretty much it. Um, what else does he ask? Is Mr. Anderson the biggest missed opportunity they've had? He's one of them. Mr. Anderson's one of them. Matt Morgan's one of them. Uh, Gunner is one of them. Crimson is one of them. Hernandez is one of them. 
You know, there's a lot of missed opportunities in TNA. Uh, why wasn't Matt Morgan a star? There we go. <laughs> Perfect timing. Matt Morgan was mentioned in the next question. Um, honestly, I don't know. I mean, it's not like he didn't have the look. He had the look. It's not that he didn't have the personality. He had somewhat of a personality. The guy can actually work in the ring. I don't see why he wasn't a big star. And it, it, it almost seemed like TNA was hesitating a little bit because you would get a solid month or two where they were really high on Matt Morgan and they were pushing Matt Morgan and they were making sure that Matt Morgan was featured on TNA Impact Wrestling. And then there was another one or two month stretch where he was pretty much not on TV. They were really hesitant with Matt Morgan and I'm not really sure why. He had the look for me. He had the talent for me. He should have been more than he was. Uh, why didn't they push Homicide as a single star? That's a good question, too. Um, I viewed Hernandez as more of a main event caliber star, but Homicide definitely had his place. He definitely had the skills. Um, again, a good question. I don't know why. Another guy TNA's dropped the ball with Homicide is definitely up there. There's several more that I'm probably forgetting, but the, the few that I named earlier, there's just some big missed opportunities for TNA. If Paul Heyman would have taken control of the product in 2009 like it was rumored, would he have saved the company? Hmm... You would think from a creative standpoint that he would at least have the creative mindset to um to put together stories and feuds and you know he would have the creative genius. So in theory from a creative standpoint a move to get a guy like Paul Heyman would definitely have been beneficial. But then you run into the problem TNA is already in enough debt as it is. Paul Heyman was never the best businessman. Is he really the right guy for running the company? You know, ECW, as great as it was, was it closed because Paul Heyman was his own worst enemy. And I don't see how it would be different if he ran TNA. I really don't. Because TNA, and he even mentioned this on, uh, I believe it was Talk is Jericho, the podcast. Um, he mentioned that TNA was losing $7 million a month. And T excuse me, ECW lost that in the seven years that they were open. That's really saying something. That TNA is pretty much bankrupt and they're holding on by a hair um yeah i i don't really think paul Heyman taking over the company from a business standpoint would have been beneficial but from a creative standpoint um yeah he definitely would have put some life back into the product so that that would have been fine uh, could the mass exodus of guys open the door for newer unknown guys to make their name and use that use that excuse me to rejuvenate the company? In theory, yes. But even if they do, who's to say they're going to make any big significant impact? No pun intended. Who's to say that this will really rejuvenate TNA? If anything, it'll just look like the normal crappy TNA product. It's a shame because the main two guys that were pretty much giving them business over the past year plus are now gone. And that's a year that TNA needs to erase. That's not a good thing. And it's hard to start over. 
in any capacity. It's hard to start from the beginning. And unfortunately, that's what TNA has to do now. Um, but yeah, even if they do step up, who's to say they're going to do anything significant? Just my opinion. Anyway, thank you all for submitting questions for this Q&A. Sorry I wasn't as energetic as always, but it is 2.36 in the morning. It's snowing outside. Yay. I'll be back with a WrestleMania Q&A next week. Stay tuned for that later.